Dr. Maria New, who is a past president of the Endocrine Society, a member of the National Academy of Sciences, and one of the nation's leading pediatric endocrinologists. Dr. New conducted pioneering research in the area of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and she discovered a new form of hypertension, apparent mineral corticoid excess. Currently, Dr. New is professor of pediatrics at the Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Now, when you started out at Cornell, what was known about steroid disorders in children? There hadn't been much. There had been some very good work done out of Johns Hopkins, where Dr. Lawson Wilkins, the father of pediatric endocrinology, had done some work. And Claude Mijon and Bob Lizard, Judson Van Wyck, and Mel Grumbach had all worked in that group. So what we pushed forward uh, under Ralph Peterson was that we began to describe a condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia in which I'm now recognized as an expert. But the fundamental work was done while I was a fellow with Ralph Peterson, and it proved to be not an infrequent disease. And it has the result of call it causing genital ambiguity in girls when the girl is affected. And so one of the great triumphs is that on my own, I started a program in the US which had just occurred in France, which is to treat mothers uh, to treat the fetus at risk for this disease so that she could be born with normal genitalia. And that was very important work because you replaced what was missing in the fetus and at the same time you stopped the genital ambiguity which required genital surgery. The fact that prenatal treatment could prevent this and that you didn't need the surgery which caused abnormalities of the genitalia as a result of the surgery, there was another option for parents who were at risk to having a child like this. And what led to your discovery of apparent mineraloid cortical excess? Yeah. Well, I had been studying the sodium-retaining hormone aldosterone. I told you that. And I got a call from Ed Bilieri, who works in San, worked in San Francisco. And he said, you know, I've just been asked to see a little Zuni Indian child. And I don't deal with children who are three years old, Maria. Would you go there? It happened that I was on my way. And I said, but I'd stop at the Zuni reservation. And they presented this little girl to me. And I knew I'd never seen anything like it before. I also knew that I couldn't work her up in the Zuni Indian Reservation. And I asked if they would allow me to bring her to New York. And I took care of this little girl. It took me three years to find out what she had. She had devastatingly high blood pressures. And I found out that she suffered an enzyme defect which all of us have to protect us from this kind of high blood pressure. And so I called her a prismatic case because she opened a whole new field of biology. And it was very helpful to me to understand this. I now have more than half of the patients in the world because it's extremely rare. And um, I probably think it's probably my biggest discovery. The way all of us protect ourselves from this natural hormone we have called hydrocortisone or cortisol is we convert it to an inactive steroid called cortisone. And cortisone is inactive because it can't enter the receptor. So we all balance this out through an enzyme that does that conversion, which is called 11-beta HSD2. If you lack that enzyme, on the basis of a genetic defect, what happens is all the cortisol is active, bioactive, and it enters the receptor for the salt-retaining hormones and drives up the blood pressure. And you can stop it by blocking the receptor with a receptor blocker, and that's how we treated her. You were president of the Endocrine Society. I was. And what would you say were the most compelling issues that you were involved with as president? 
the year that I was president was the year that the women in the endocrine society wanted a stronger role than they had. And there was a great push on me to do something about it. So we developed the Women's Caucus, which is a way for women to meet and discuss issues that affect women, not only in endocrinology, but in careers and what to do, how to work, you know. I think that in many ways the Endocrine Society is my scientific family. I know them. The ones that have become my friends are firm friends. They can help me. And my view of endocrinology is that it's probably moving faster than most other fields. I'm glad to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you.